Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band, and we're delighted that you've joined us here at Trinity on this warm winter afternoon for our annual holiday concert. A special welcome to those of you, families and friends, that are um, not with us in the church today, but are joining us via the live streaming here at, at Trinity. We're grateful to um, Brian Heinlein, the director of music, for facilitating that so that people near and far can, can join us for this concert. We've scheduled a program that includes some contemporary band music in the first half of the program, and then the second half will feature tunes from the holiday season. A few introductions as we begin today. My name is Mary Schiller, I'll be your announcer. And I'd like to introduce to you the conductor of the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band, Mr. Neil Monkey. Neil? We also have an associate conductor, and he plays in the French horn section of our band, and that's Mr. Alan Bruce. Al? And the current president of the Sheboygan Pops band, Concert Band playing baritone saxophone, Catherine Conley Mink. Catherine? <laughs> Traditionally, we open our concerts with our national anthem, which, of course, doesn't need an introduction. But today, however, um, I do want to say a few things about the piece that we're going to play because it's a, a very unique version um, of our national anthem that also incorporates a brief portion of a holiday tune. Several years ago, we actually performed the premiere performance of this particular arrangement. And even more exciting than that is the fact that the arranger is a member of our band, playing bass clarinet, Mr. Randall Stikes. Randy? In addition to playing the bass clarinet, he plays a number of other instruments. He also um, sings, and, and many people believe that's his best instrument. Um, he enjoys singing in barbershop quartets, and he currently participates with the church choir at Calvary Lutheran and also with the Lakeshore Lutheran Chorale. Randall is a retired Lutheran minister, and he relocated to Sheboygan, and we've had the good fortune of having him join our band. Um, he's not new to arranging music. He's done several arrangements for choir and mixed instruments in both Seattle and Sturgeon Bay, where he previously lived. The inspiration for arranging this particular piece um, occurred a number of years ago when Randall was playing a Christmas concert with the Peninsula Symphonic Band up in Door County. Um, one of the clarinetists remarked to him after they opened their concert with the Star Spangled Banner that it would be nice to have a holiday arrangement. So Randall followed through on that, he arranged this piece, and we present for you now Star Spangled Banner for a Christmas Night.
The name Gene Swearingen is synonymous with popular band compositions. He hails from Ohio, where he worked as a performer, a conductor, an arranger, and an educator. In addition to his teaching responsibilities, he's the professor of music and the department chair of music education at Capital University in Columbus, Ohio. He travels extensively as a guest conductor, an adjudicator, and an educational clinician. In All Its Glory is a piece that premiered at the annual meeting of the Ohio Music Educators Association. It was dedicated and performed by the Worthington Civic Band. The title serves as a reflection of the city of Worthington, Ohio. It was founded in 1803, and this Columbus suburb is rich in historic tradition and has always maintained a strong sense of community pride. So conducting in all its glory, our associate conductor, Al Bruce.
Along an English countryside is a musical tribute to the late Sir Malcolm Arnold, one of the most notable English composers of our time. He was born in 1921 and he died in 2006. He was actually born in Northampton, England. He was the youngest of five children in a family of prosperous shoemakers. But his, his parents were both musical and um, at the young age he actually saw Louis Armstrong perform and he took up the trumpet at age 12. He had sort of a rebellious teenage years and then um, really became interested in jazz music. Eventually, he won a scholarship. He went to the Royal College of Music and um, played trumpet professionally for a number of years. But then at age 30, he stopped and um, mainly composed music. And he really had a gift for natural melodic um, music and he, he earned a fine reputation as a composer of light music and a lot of his arrangements were actually um, set to Welsh, English, Scottish, um, and Cornish dances. He also composed some music for films, um, most notably the Bridge Over the River Kwai, Hobson's Choice, and the St. Trinian Sirius. Um, Malcolm Arnold also had kind of a dark side to his life. He had a lot of um, personal grief. He, um, he was alcoholic. He suffered from depression. He had two failed marriages and attempted suicide. Um, he died, as I said, in 2006 of natural causes. And um, the piece we're going to play for you now, along an English countryside, I mean, the title might sound like it's very light, but um, I think you're going to see some reflection of the the darker side of um, Malcolm Arnold's life too. So we present for you along an English countryside.
Anton Breckner, you may associate that name with the great Austrian composer and also organist um, for his symphonies. He wrote more than nine symphonies during his lifetime and his fourth and his seventh are the most popular of his symphonies. A lot of people don't know that he also composed a lot of sacred music, including masses, psalms, cantatas, as well as short pieces to actually fit in appropriate places in church services. And Hymn of Praise is one of the latter. Behold the Great High Priest is the beginning of the text, and the music soars in magnific magnificence and splendor. There are some great chords and, and climaxes in this piece. But it is written that what Bruckner had in mind is not a display of pomp, but a transporting loftiness of spirit, and the music ends pianissimo, very softly, on a note of humility. Anton Bruckner's Hymn of Praise.
It's time to give the woodwind section of our band a little bit of a workout in Eric Osterling's composition, Waltzing Winds, which is, is of the ballet or skating type of waltz. Osterling is a contemporary composer for band. He was raised in Connecticut and began his musical career as a professional pianist at the young age of 14, accompanying and arranging music for several dance bands in the Hartford, um, Connecticut area. He graduated from Ithaca College and continued his musical studies at the University of Connecticut and the Hart College of Music, specializing in music education. And he really has an international reputation as a composer and arranger, in addition to being an educator. When he died in 2005, he had more than 600 musical publications to his credit. So we present Eric Osterling's Waltzing Winds. Franz Liszt was both a piano virtuoso and an outstanding composer. He wrote 19 Hungarian Rhapsodies for piano solo, 
some of which were rearranged for orchestra and also piano duet. The most famous of these was the Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2, which was composed in 1847. It is considered by many um, concert pianists to be technically, a technically difficult showpiece. Friska is the second half of the Liszt Rhapsody, and it's a lively allegro based upon a Hungarian folk dance. And it will be familiar to you because it's not only performed in concert halls, but also it has um, had many appearances in popular culture worldwide. Most notable of these is its use by Warner Brothers in Rhapsody Rabbit, which features Bugs Bunny as a concert pianist playing the solo piano version. The piece also contains a wonderful condensa, and today that's going to be played by our lead clarinetist, Jane Halverson. So please enjoy the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band's rendition of the finale of Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2, Friska. Thank you. 
We'll be taking a short intermission, so we invite you to stand up and stretch your legs as well. We'd like to begin the second half of our program featuring music of the holiday season with some traditional holiday carols arranged by Carl Strauman. It features Angels We Have Heard on High, What Child Is This, Gather Round the Tree, and O Come All Ye Faithful, the Christmas Pageant Overture.
Babes in Toyland is an operetta composed by Victor Herbert with a libretto by Glenn McDonough, which wove together various characters from Mother Goose nursery rhymes into a Chris Christmas-themed musical extravaganza. The original production of March of the Toys opened at the Chicago Grand Opera House in June of 1903, and it toured to a number of East Coast cities before it opened in New York in October of that same year, where it ran for 192 performances. It's certainly a perennial favorite and has had many successful tours and revivals over the subsequent decades. In this particular work, Victor Herbert's gift for melody meets with his experience as a military band conductor to in inspire a delightful concert work which effectively blends the March miniature style that was utilized by Tchaikovsky and others with the Grand March style that's heard um, in the operas of Verdi and Wagner. This particular arrangement is by Herbert Lincoln Clark and it was arranged for use of the Sousa Band. So we present March of the Toys.
Our next selection, Christmas Day, was written in late 1910 and it premiered in January of 1911 by the English composer Gustav Holst. At that time, Holst was teaching at Morley College in London and this piece was dedicated to his students there. Originally, the piece was actually written for chorus, so soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and orchestra. However, this arrangement was transcribed by Larry Dane, a current composer and arranger with Wisconsin roots. Um, Dane was born in Rosendale, and he taught music in various places in Wisconsin throughout his career. And in Dane's arrangement, the brasses play the vocal parts from Holt's original composition, and the woodwinds play the orchestral accompaniment. It begins with a trumpet solo played today by our lead trumpet, um, the lead of our trumpet section, Mr. William Hughes. That part originally was scored for the mezzo soprano. In Christmas Day, you're going to hear variations of Good Christian Men Rejoice, interwoven with parts of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen and the First Noel. One of the techniques that Gustav Holst used around this time in many of his con compositions was the contrapuntal device where there's two different tunes that are being played simultaneously. And one of the melodies he uses in this particular piece is something called Come Ye Lofty, Come Ye Lowly, which is an old British melody. So please enjoy Christmas Day Fantasy on Old Carols.
While you've been an attentive audience in listening to our music, it's time for some audience participation. And so we have a Christmas pop sing-along. This is a James Ployer arrangement. It includes Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Silver Bells, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And leading us in the singing will be our lead clarinetist, Jane Halverson. I do want to warn you, there's a couple little introduction things, but just watch Jane. She'll cue you. Christmas Pop Sing Along.
Thank you, Jane. This brings us to the end of our concert today, and on behalf of the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band, I'd certainly like to thank you for joining us here at Trinity Lutheran. A special word of thanks to Brian Heinlein for his assistance today, as well as pastors Timothy Mack and John Berg for allowing us to perform in this beautiful space. This obviously has been a free concert, and we're grateful to the donors um, who you see listed in your program who helped to make this happen. If you too are interested in supporting the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band, we encourage you to make a contribution as you leave the church today. Your contributions may be tax deductible since we are a 501c3 organization. Our final selection for this afternoon's concert is a melody arranged by John Higgins entitled Christmas on Broadway. And it includes It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, Pine Cones and Holly Berries, Toyland, March of the Toys, My Favorite Things, We Need a Little Christmas, and it ends with God Bless Us Everyone. Christmas on Broadway.